On this episode of Geek Beat, Minority Report in real life, lasers on the moon, and a new way to connect your toaster to your TV. I'm John P, and it all begins... Zip it. Unveil the time portal. Now. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by QNAP. Network storage made awesome. Remember that scene from Minority Report where Tom Cruise is walking through the mall and all the screens are scanning his eyeballs and greeting him personally? Good evening. Good evening. You can move the old fashioned John Astin. Well, get ready, because Dr. Marios Savidis, director of the SciLab Biometrics Lab at Carnegie Mellon, says he's already built a machine that's capable of iris recognition from up to 39 feet away. John Anderton, you can use a Guinness right about now. Right now, his team is tweaking the machine with plans to give it tilt and pan capability to hand it over to the US military for use in war zones. Think of it as a robot that can stand guard near some Marines just scanning everyone that walks by. It could alert its human partners when a person of interest is nearby. Next step. Attach a frickin' laser beam to its head so it can pull a Dalek on him. Speaking of laser beams... This is the phase in which we put a giant laser on the moon. In October, the Lunar Laser Communications Demonstrator first fired up its 4-inch laser beam, pointed it at White Sands, New Mexico, and unleashed a fury of data on the base station. <laughs> Anyways, the key to this plan is the giant laser. Historically, satellite communications have taken place using radio transmission, but NASA is testing a new laser-based system, which is many orders of magnitude faster, plus uses less power. How much faster? Well, the trusty old radio method takes about 639 hours to download an average HD movie, while the laser can do it in eight minutes. By 2017, they should begin transmitting at 1.25 gigabits per second, and the sky's the limit from there. We shall call it the Alan Parsons Project. Oh with that God. much data, I think we should get the boys from NASA in touch with the boys from QNAP. Hmm, NASA has four letters. QNAP has four letters. Coincidence? I think not because they're all a bunch of rocket scientists. QNAP makes some of the world's coolest data storage devices, and the good news is you don't have to go to the moon to get one. Just fire up Amazon.com and you can have a new QNAP rocketing your way in no time. Enough with the puns, Dave. Right. For example, the new HS210 combines a silent fanless design with dual drive redundancy plus over a hundred apps that'll let you not only back up all your data, but even stream movies to your TV, play music on your AirPlay speakers, monitor your security system, and more. Oh, you want more power? Okay, big boy. How about the four LAN, 10 gig E-ready SSD caching, six drive bay iSCSI capable TS670? QNAP has storage arrays that scale up to 144 drives and over 567 terabytes of raw capacity. So I'm pretty sure they can handle your needs at home or the office. Head over to QNAP.com and if you need help picking one out, just tweet me at John Pose and I'll be happy to help you spend your money. Speaking of spending your money, how did I miss the Fly Cly Smart Wheel Kickstarter? That's a weird name, Fly Cly. Anyway, it was a campaign that ended a couple months ago, having raised over $700,000 against a $100,000 goal. Basically, it's a little electric motor and a battery combination that wraps around the hub of a rear wheel and provides electric assist anytime you pedal. You can get data from it with a smartphone app. It's fully, it'll fully charge in three hours, and it'll propel a bike up to 20 miles an hour for 30 miles. Best of all, the Fly Cly can be had for under 600 bucks. By the way, all of the links to our stories can be found in today's show notes at geekbeat.tv forward slash 784. Can you believe it's episode 784? That's all? Amazing. 
HD Base T is a new standard designed to simplify the interconnection of all our AV and computing devices. Basically, it lets you hook up any piece of equipment to any other piece with just an Ethernet cable. So you can connect your TV to your computer, to your amplifier, to another TV, to a Blu-ray player, to a Wi-Fi access point, all using Ethernet and running through a little HD Base T switch. What's very cool is that the Ethernet can not only transmit data, but can even carry 100 watts of power as well. So imagine hanging a TV on the wall, but with no power cable. You just run an Ethernet port to the spot you want to hang it, and the other end of the cable is plugged into a HD Base T switch somewhere else in the house or in the office, supplying power, internet for the smart functions, and even pushing your Blu-ray content directly to the TV. It's a new standard, but we should be seeing prod products coming out in the near future. So keep your eyes on it because it's gonna change the world. Thanks to all of you guys who are our patrons. If you haven't pledged your support for GeekBeat yet, you can head over to geekbeat.tv forward slash patrons and learn how even pledging a dollar a month can help us keep the show going and allow us to grow the coverage. Plus we've got all sorts of goodies to bribe you with ranging from geek badges to t-shirts to TVs. Okay, maybe not that last one, but there's a lot of good stuff. Until next time, I'm John P. Stay classy, San Diego. How about a Delorean? Nice. <laughs>